The videos I've released over the past few months have covered some of the fundamental elements of vertical rescue, the foundations on which many vertical rescue systems and techniques are based. Having worked our way through anchors and mechanical advantage, in this video we're going to combine those into a complete rescue system, a hauling and lowering system. There are still some components of a hauling and lowering system that we haven't seen in previous videos, but presenting the system at this point will contextualise those components, and having built the system, we can walk through them and explain their purpose and how we use them. So in this video, we're going to build a twin tension hauling and lowering system, and use it to raise and lower a casualty, or in this case, some weights. Once we've seen the system in operation, we'll walk through some of the components that we haven't seen in previous videos. My goal is to build a system that looks something like this. As you can see from the diagram, two of the key components that make this system work are its anchors and its mechanical advantage system. Taking the diagram as a guide, I'm going to build two independent anchors and attach two independent 3 to 1 mechanical advantage systems to them. In the absence of a suitable edge on my driveway, I'm going to suspend the ropes through pulleys in a tree to simulate an edge so that we can raise and lower our load. There are four discrete activities to complete when creating a hauling and lowering system, and this can be a good way to task members when working in a team. We need to prepare our anchor, prepare our mechanical advantage, prepare our edge management, and prepare our load. I don't have the luxury of working in a team today, so I'm going to be doing those things myself. I'll get to that now, and we'll talk again once we have a system ready for use. Now our system's built and ready to use, I'm going to do a quick raise and lower of the 40 kilogram mass attached to the end of our system, and then we'll step through some of the components of the system that we haven't seen before. So to begin with, to do a raise, I'm going to make sure that my ID is set to belay mode, that's the handle open, not locked. And I'll attach my rope grabs to their respective ropes. So with both rope grabs attached, it's simply a matter of hauling. The mass is now about a metre off the ground. To do a lower, I'm going to remove my rope grabs. Before I do that, I'm going to lock my ID, because I'm not going to be minding the tail of the device. So I'll remove my rope grabs to start with. And now I'm just going to do a normal lower using the descenders. In an ideal world, I'd have two people doing this lower. This could be one person operating each descender, or it could be one person operating both descenders, as I'm about to, and a second person monitoring the tail, just to remove any possibility of human error resulting in dropping the load. And our load's on the ground. Give us some slack to simplify packing up at the end of the day. The most obvious difference between this system and, in particular, the mechanical advantage systems that we've seen in previous videos is that here we have two everything. We have two anchors, two descenders, two ropes, two tapes at the anchor for our tree, two slings attaching our load to the ropes, two everything. We do this to provide redundancy should one component in the system fail. And while it's exceptionally unlikely that a component will fail because it's not up to the job, it is absolutely possible for components to fail, and it does happen not infrequently. 99 times out of 100, it's not because of a badly manufactured or badly maintained piece of equipment, it's down to human error. And that's ultimately the source of the majority of failures we're going to see in our roping systems. Although it's not impossible that a piece of equipment may fail, particularly if we have ropes or other textiles rubbing over hard points that could result in a cut. Okay, so redundancy is great. 
We've got two everything, two anchors, two mechanical advantage systems, two redirection pulleys here to give us some height above the ground, two descenders, all coming down to one rigging plate. If redundancy is great, why one rigging plate? So bearing in mind the failure modes that we discussed, a rigging plate is a single chunk of metal. There are no mechanical parts that could fail or be poorly maintained, and there's virtually no scope for human error. Either a carabiner's in a hole or it's not in a hole. No matter which holes we're using, our rigging plate is just as strong. So I'm perfectly happy with a single rigging plate in our system as a focus point for all of our equipment. And we've just seen one of the advantages that that can bring, keeping our two descenders very close together such that a single operator can operate them. The next obvious thing that didn't happen while we were hauling our load is that the load didn't drop to the ground when I let go of the haul ropes. And this is important, obviously, if we're hauling a real person and the haul team, particularly with an efficient system, could be a single person. If the haul team were to, to let go, were to trip over, we don't want the load to take a sudden drop. This is because we have progress capture built into our systems and it's a very important component of any hauling system. When I say progress capture, it's a generic term. Here, obviously, as you can see, we're using descenders, a Petzl ID and an ISC SAR AB as our two descenders. And while this works okay, you may have noticed while I was attaching the haul, I had to pull a fair bit to take the slack out of the systems. Rope wasn't running very smoothly through these devices at all. We know a Petzl ID has an efficiency of about 30% in this sort of configuration which is terrible. In terms of pulley efficiency, in terms of practical mechanical advantage, it's worse than if we just had a carabiner there with, with no pulley whatsoever. SAR AB, I don't know what the efficiency is, but it's going to be worse than the ID. So it does the job. It does a very important job for us. So with no other options available to us, we've elected to use very inefficient pulleys as our progress capture. <laughs> More typically, as a progress capture in a hauling system, you'll see devices such as the CMC, MPD or Clutch, which have efficiencies in the range of 95%, which is wonderful. It does a brilliant job, can also be used for lowering with a controlled descent, which makes it a very versatile tool. If you have an MPD or a Clutch available for use, this is the place to use it. Other devices that could fill this need, depending on the needs of your system, are pulleys that will spin in one direction but not the other, but don't have a lowering mechanism, such as the Petzl Pro Traction or Micro Traction, and they have efficiencies around about the 85 to 90% range. Working over edges often requires working around rough or sharp terrain, which can quickly damage or even cut a loaded Kermantle rope. In addition to that, the amount of friction introduced into a system by having rope running over an uneven or, a, or an abrasive surface such as sandstone is substantial and can very quickly increase the amount of force that the whole team need to apply to move a load. For both of these reasons, managing edges and managing friction at edges is an extremely important part of a vertical rescue system. Edge management is a big topic and we'll look at it in some detail in the next video. So that, with the exception of a stretcher attachment and an actual casualty, is a simple hauling and lowering system. And this really is one of the bread and butter systems of vertical rescue.